Nope, there's the baby. There Let's go. No, that was me. I was making that. What? Oh, that was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Uno, clip dos, it. tres. Go. What is up, everybody? It's your boy, Big Hop, a.k.a. Beastie Hops on Twitter with my boy, as always, Harrison Simpings, a.k.a. Twitch35. This is Lecture Hall, brought to you by Student Union Sports. I'm hoping you're having a great one so far this week. It's been a long day in the Hopwood household, so I'm not I'm not prepared. I just have my Wisconsin shirt on. I didn't come with a theme this week. But we got a great show. I'm excited. I'm ready to run through a brick wall, Harry. What we got? A, what do you think? We're good. We've got a good one. I think we do have a good one in store. Also, thanks for acknowledging my uh, Haley uh, Haley Cruz uh, simping right there in the intro. Thanks for acknowledging my tweet earlier. She didn't, so I guess the simp will continue. The simp simple saga continue continues. So we get shirts. You promised the people <laughs> shirts. We will get the shirts, and that will be like you have to acknowledge me at this point. I'm selling shirts with your name on them. Like you're gonna DM me and be like, stop selling them, and that's how we get make contact, and that's how we get her on this show. Yeah, since she's an NCAA player, then it doesn't matter. Well, she graduated though, so. Oh. Well, I guess she can make money off her own likeness. Anyways, speaking of making money off of likenesses here in the quarantine, our first topic for the day is the top five shows that each of us are binging or are planning to binge or we think you should binge during quarantine here. Producer Liam said he'd get on this, so I'm excited. Harrison, would you like to do the the honors with your with your five? Do you want to go like everyone gives one or everyone gives their five and then we comment? I'd say everyone gives their five. All right. Uh, I just and, mean, I need we'll a second Harry. to get my list down. This, this is right. a new topic to me. Harry. In no particular Harry order. No, no particular order. You want me to rank what? these shows? I can't rank these shows. Show no, 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 no. Yeah, it's tough to. I agree with that. It's. I can't. Like oh, my top no. five. It's you know they. You can't really separate them. Yeah. All so. Right. Uh, All right. And then we span no different order. genres here too. You got to keep that in mind. Yeah, you can't. You can't sure. rank these. Uh, the show. The first show I'm going with is the one I'm currently re binging, which is How I Met Your Mother. It's an American classic. You just you can't beat it. Uh, speaking of American classics, the goat of TV shows, Seinfeld, is my second pick. My third pick, I've got Brooklyn Nine Nine, probably one of the most underrated TV shows of all time. Uh, my fourth pick, I've got The One Hundred. Uh, kind of a goofy show. Most people probably haven't heard of it. It's on Netflix. Has four or five seasons, I believe, with a another one coming in august great show and then my fifth one uh it's called power the first few seasons are on hulu and then you have to get a stars account to finish it which i haven't finished it yet so that's what i'm doing after how i met your mother with uh an honorable mention to south park and the office but i feel like those are too basic to be included on a list like this could not agree more Here's Big Hoppa's five. All right. We got How I Met Your Mother because it is my favorite TV show, and I don't think you can go wrong at all there. Uh, next, we got Parks and Rec because it's just comedy genius and gold. After that, we got New Girl. <laughs> You're sleeping on it. I know you are, but give it a shot. Give it its due. You'll love it. After that, we got Archer. Archer is so good. It's an animated comedy. If you haven't seen it, you have to go watch it. I would say don't watch it with the parents. If you're under 18, it might get a little weird. It's a little... It's uh, it's on... I don't even remember what it used to be on. It's on FX. It's like FX. So, you know... Yeah, it's, yeah, it's on FX. So. Uh, but Archer's a great one. Last and, uh, and certainly not least... Harrison, you mentioned American classics. Well, then you got to talk about your boy, Boston Red Sox, great Sam Mayday Malone in Cheers. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Drunkest bartender, or so drunkest player to ever sober up and buy a bar. 
it's a great show. It is from like the late seventies into the eighties and, and then into the early nineties. You'll enjoy it. I promise you. All that kind of stuff. I also put yeah. honorable mention had the office. I did have Seinfeld and Brooklyn nine nine. If you're looking for something to take up a little bit more time, your boy for shows over an hour, you got to watch Breaking Bad or House of Cards. You really can't go wrong with either of those. A little bit more on the, uh, like, tense, dramatic side. I don't know. I'm not a good big genre guy. I don't know how to describe them. House of Cards is political, and Breaking Bad is about drugs. So it's a great one. I think you can throw... Game of Thrones onto that hour long list too. If you haven't seen that one before, that one's a. <laughs> what was that? Yeah, that was pretty impressive. Hey, it's a theme. People forget Papa has vocals. <laughs> They're there. Uh, we'll have we'll yeah. have you record hey, our uh, you intro know? and outro song for this. But yeah, yeah boys, I can I kind of agree um, with uh, can't can't argue with all y'all's picks. Um, they're all classics. I I went for like I wanted it to give people some variety, so they're not just binging like five rom coms in a row. So in in hopes of doing that, I have like five shows all across the board. Leading off with The Wire, it's a classic. A lot of people these days are are too new school for it, and they're like, oh, it's boring, I don't know what's going on. Suffer through the first season, learn the characters, and it's the best show ever. Pay fucking attention, people. Uh, Next up, I was going to say, like, The Office or Parks and Rec, but I'm going to throw in The Community, because that show Mm. gets so overlooked, and I turn that show on, like, in the background while I'm at work, and I just get sucked in. It's so fucking funny, and it just plays off all... At first, it seems like it's just, like, a normal sitcom, but then it starts making fun of itself for being a sitcom. And uh, I just appreciate that meta humor. Living With Yourself with Paul Rudd, my, my kind of newer-aged recommendation, that's, like, a Netflix show with Paul Rudd. Not a lot of people heard it. It kind of came and went, but... It's like 10 episodes, and you'll binge the fuck out of them because they're like 30-minute episodes. And uh, that is phenomenal. If you're a Paul Rudd guy, got to go. Is that where the Paul Rudd meme came from? Uh, When it's like him and his clone? Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Hence living with yourself. <laughs> that. Yep, I get it now. Got to throw in. <laughs> so I wanted to throw in Sopranos, but instead I'm going to say Boardwalk Empire just because Steve Buscemi is the fucking man. And a lot of people missed out on that show too, but it's five seasons. It's the best gangster show out there pertaining to Prohibition. So mm. good one to watch. And then finally The Leftovers. No one knows about this one. Got passed on on H- like HBO. had to only do three seasons when it was scheduled for five because no one watched it. But... If you want to cry, if you want to get in touch with your emotions, you watch that show. You can't get through an episode without crying. And that, if you know, if we're not watching shows to feel something, what are we doing? <laughs> Couldn't agree more. Um, Thank you for including me in the movie topics, boys. Of course, producer Lee. Like TV topics. I think Cheers might be the most underrated show Ooh. on this list. Sorry, Liam, I haven't heard of half these shows you listed off. Maybe I'm just not cultured enough. Though. You're only a couple years older than me, and I feel like I'm so young listening to this. <laughs> You're just crying. <laughs> Minus yeah, you kidney stones. Isn't that what old people get? Dude, yeah, those are brutal. Uh, but uh, cheers. I've been, like, off and on watching that for a couple months now. I can't watch a lot of it at a time just because it's, like, I'm just so used to new age television, and it's not, like, the Seinfeld-type feel that sucks you in. But like, I love 86, 97, 2005, 2004, then 2019 um, for Masters Week. And so, I'll be honest, if you go to my Twitter at Beastie Hops, you'll see the video of me crying when he won it on the date. And then I retweeted it when I cried re watching him win, especially being a father. Um, at the time last year, I knew I was going to be a father coming up but this one definitely was a little was a little extra just because of the history um and the the symmetry with him um hugging his dad in 97 and then him hugging charlie his son um after winning the masters last year so waterworks at the hopwood household 
otherwise great i mean obviously great iconic all-time masters to watch for years to come harrison you're the resident golfer i'll let you have the floor yeah like going back to to that last last year watching funny the funny part about that was uh on saturday my roommate and i we went to this bar for this masters watch party so we're sitting there they had like masters themed drinks and food great 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 time great atmosphere and we're up in like this uh like the bar had kind of like an upper part to it like it's kind of like elevated above the rest and we're back there with a bunch of golf guys and like i just like fall on the table and i literally have a seizure on the table there and i like wake up i guess like 20 seconds later i guess to like this whole crowd of people around me and i'm like covered in sweat and they're just like are you okay and the first thing i do is look up and see tiger just rip a three wood on a par five to like i don't know eight feet has an eagle putt and i was like what is that for eagle and they're like dude like who cares like are you okay and i was like what are you talking about am i okay tiger's got an eagle putt that was probably the highlight the highlight of that masters (laughs) for me (laughs) well hold on time out we're not gonna go on a tangent but we have you getting kidney stones last year and you had a seizure. This is keep this in mind, folks. This is something we're gonna have to bring up at a later date. <laughs> yeah, last year I had a lot of medical issues, spent a lot of time in the hospital. But uh yeah, so like my uh first master's memory of last year comes comes from having a seizure in a bar on the west side of Chicago. And then uh obviously like when they had all the uh, bad weather coming in and they moved all the tea times uh up a little bit it's like i was walking to church in the s- snow watching the coverage of when like the day started i woke up earlier earlier than normal watched it all morning walked a, like a mile to church watching it on my phone while it's dumping snow on me and then I w- walked back also watching it. The whole time I'm in service, I'm, like, pulling out my phone, like, checking to see where Tiger's at. And I was like, oh, he birdied. And then he gives it back, bogeying, like, the next two two holes, Four. was it? And I was like, are Four you kidding me? Like, yeah. he's done. He's he's done. And then, like, I lost service a little bit, came back to my room. And I'm like, oh, he's, he's like, back. And then, like, obviously that back nine stretch. Thank, thankful for that uh, Molinari just uh, – fall apart there but uh oh my gosh i like one of my roommates is probably the biggest tiger fan that i've ever met and i called him because he was as girlfriends and he was like borderline crying and all we could say was like is this really about to happen like is he really doing it and then when he made that putt we all just like screamed and i threw on my sunday red threw on my black golf pants my red nike polo <laughs> I, I, I put on the works for it uh that was that's definitely probably my favorite golf memory that has nothing to do with me playing golf was probably watching that golf tournament because like my only other like memory is of like tiger like obviously like east lake was huge and then uh tears there too by the way but i think like my most like vivid tiger memory like of him winning to that point was what was he was he wearing, winning the memorial when he had like that chip in on like 16 that crazy chip in like yeah. that's my most vivid tiger memory because i was still kind of like too young to really like i knew like i knew what he was doing and i was like aware of him winning majors when i was younger but like it didn't hold the weight that it did that it would now so like i just kind of took all that for granted yeah i know that sucks as a huge golf fan i i hate that i have that same i mean i uh, that's we're what same age so it's the same it's the same difference for me as like i can't believe that like this is like my reality now um but yeah like people forget at one time there was a five-way tie for first mm-hmm. on the back nine there people also forget that patrick cantlay was like yeah. he had the he solo lead in the solo lead with like four holes to go and or like five holes to go and then I don't I don't know what his the rest of his scorecard looks like, but all I know is he ends up in like he ends up like nine under when he was going for thirteen under, I believe, at one time. So the other the other thing about that leaderboard is I remember like a few months before the Masters, I was listening to a certain very popular golf podcast that we're both very big fans of, but no free ads. <laughs> I was listening to them and uh they were talking about some like analytics guy that runs like this super like complex data system 
that had accurately no. predicted like the winner of four majors in a row, and it said Shoffley was gonna win. So I'd kind of been telling my buddies that because they're they're big gamblers, they're they're degenerates, you know. So uh, one of my buddies just happened to throw Shoffley into like his uh, mass, his like pick five guys. I don't know how that stuff works. And he just happened to throw Shoffley in there just because I I seem so confident in it. So when Shoffley's creeping up the leaderboard on Sunday, Molinari's kind of blowing it. Tiger's like there. I'm like, this is really how it's going to happen. I'm going to be right about the Shoffley pick. It's going to be crazy to know that I was right, but it's going to come at the cost of watching Tiger blow a back nine lead on Sunday at, at Augusta. So like I was really like holding on for dear life there for a second because I thought Tiger was going to blow it and Shoffley was going to come through and win just because the computer said so. Yeah, well, and the crazy thing too is about that is um, I'm, I just like – I really like Xander for whatever reason. I think last year in four straight tournaments, I took him to uh, – have a, a t- I'd bet on him to be T or I uh, take a top five and I won like three out of the four bets. So I was hyped and I took him in the masters. I think it started with the masters as I took him um, to go in the top five. He had a putt to also be co-leader at one point misses pars and then ends up tying for fifth. So I won my money. So I was hyped plus tiger one. And I was just like, it was elated. Um, but yeah, it was that was like, especially the way that Tiger did it to like beat the people that he created. Um, on top of like, yeah, no kidding. On top of just like how crazy that leaderboard, because like like you said, like people forget that like we had. At, I think at the time we had the five co-leaders. Everybody was at twelve under. There were still there was five more guys who were either done or really cl- or like just about to finish who were ten under. So like. If if everybody has similar holes there, there could have been like an eight way playoff. Like obviously Tiger did like what he did vintage Tiger things, but like there's a legitimate point in the in the round where it's like literally anything could just happen right here. Like it's all in the balance. I I wouldn't even call it vintage Tiger things because that's just like he was playing such a different style of golf than what vintage Tiger did how he how aggressive vintage Tiger is he was kind of playing pretty conservative once Molinari started to fall apart there like he made it he made his birdies where he needed to make birdies and he uh made pars when he needed to make pars he had a few bogeys early on but coming down the stretch like what is it on 12 when he watched Molinari hit it in the water and like he talks about how he saw Kepka and uh, Ian Poulter hit it in the water when he was coming down 11. It's like he went at the middle, like at like the middle of the green as far away and played for the two putt par when like vintage Tiger takes it on. He, he takes it on the uh, right side of that bunker and tries to play the slope down. And he, like he instead of what did he say? He said he hit nine iron. He probably hits an eight iron there, or maybe he hit, tries to hit like a lower flighted seven i don't know i'm not tiger woods i can't think through think like he does but like vintage tiger like doesn't play conservative he's like step on the gas break their necks like let's do this thing that's fair you make a good point and that's honestly like that's a very fair assessment i also loved about the broadcast them bringing in jim nance mm. um, i first of all i needed I needed one of two things, Jim to make Tiger cry or Tiger to make Jim cry. And there was a point right after – so during the actual match, Jim just was silent and let everybody – you heard the Tiger chants, had him hug. There was nothing coming from the TV broadcast. Um, but then the same thing as they're watching him finish out and everything, he lets Tiger soak it in and – there's a point when he starts asking Tiger more questions where he gets very quiet. I mean, you know, you know, Jim Nance, how Mm -hmm. he asks questions, he gets quiet, but it was different. And you could see in his face that he like, he somehow held stoic. And then I didn't watch the full coverage. He all, he got Tiger this close. He, and I was like, Oh my God, like he's about to cry. And like, not even a way like, Oh, I want to see this man cry. Like I want to see this machine who had just gone through Need everything. some oil. Yeah, he needed some oil. Uh, but, it, but, like, somebody who's gone through more in his life than most people do, like, it was just 
it's such a magical moment. Like, like if you're like, if you're a sports fan, you have to like take stock in what that moment means for the sports world because there's nobody i mean we can debate this all day but like there's nobody more polarizing than tiger oh for sure it's it's going to go down 30 years from now as one of the greatest sports moments of all time like you can say it now but down the road i think is when that's really going to hit in like how important and how special that was oh i mean it's not even it's not even close. Um, Producer Liam, I saw your face pop up. Do you have something to throw in here? No, I was just chiming in for the cloud of an Instagram picture. But uh, if you guys want to toss any questions at me, hey, man, I'll get to answer. <laughs> but no, I was zoned out. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. That's what Producer Liam is here for, folks, to make sure the show's on the road and make sure we get cloud. Anyways, I think... That makes a perfect time. It's always a perfect time. <laughs> you know what time it is, boys. Thank you for the drum roll. Oh. Real raggy. Ah, original lemonade. It's truly time, baby. Truly outstanding performance of the week. I took a small sip so I can try to yug the rest of it after. Our truly outstanding performance of the week is Barstool Big Cat, Big Cat, a.k.a. Coach Gus Duggerton, uh, the offensive coordinator for Florida State. If you aren't a Barstool fan like me and Harrison are and producer Liam is, who watch like everything Barstool, this, uh, I would call it personality different personality i don't know the second the second person that is big cats coach duggerton american uh, legend playing, american legend big fella uh, i believe it's the acc championship game tonight uh florida state against georgia tech and uh let's see yeah acc championship i believe it's number three ranked versus number two ranked you know you're playing a video uh, so- game with georgia techs and the acc championship <laughs> that's that's gonna make our big clemson following happy i'm sure um <laughs> uh so yeah that's my truly outstanding performance of the week i do have a bonus unless you got one harrison i was just gonna comment on coach duggerton just how he's started off humble beginnings as the offensive coordinator at a small max school toledo <laughs> And, he, you know, he just really built a program up from nothing on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, he had a he had a very weak defense. And, I mean, he just he ran the table to a MAC championship and a very close, close bowl loss to, I believe, Georgia. Very close. Just that offense was a juggernaut. Right. He really built it from the ground up. And, like, it's great to see him get a promotion to a primetime program like Florida State. It's – you just – you got to love it for a guy like that just – Humble guy, humble guy. He has a great attitude. Bigger guy, which means like you know that if you're over 270, that you're gonna be a good football coach. You you just gotta be happy for the guy. You know, Hopefully he can take home the ACC title tonight and um, earn a spot in the national championship game where he can really put himself on a big stage. And you know, hopefully he's got a head coaching job in store for him in the future. Like, I'm pretty loyal to Jeff Brom and West Lafayette, but if we could land Coach Duggerton, I think it would be huge for the program. Brom's done a fantastic job in recruiting, but I think Duggerton can take that recruiting to the next level, put us at probably a top 10 class in the country. You know, I'm just I'm excited to see what opportunities present himself for, for, Coach, for Coach Duggs after tonight's game. I'm just really happy for the guy. I feel like I've known him for years. <laughs> This is a true love story between you and Coach uh, All I know is we love to. All I know is that we love to run the damn ball. Um, love to run and, the ball. And you know, Cam Banks for Heisman. Yeah, run the damn ball, baby. Cam Banks for Heisman. For Heisman. Um, we get that on I'm excited. Team. Really, we need. We need to put that on it. We need I don't to know. be the we first to do that. that. We might but, get the season, the season assist for that one. 
Yeah, I hope if we make it first, who knows? But we also have to have the gall and the stones, the kidney stones to do so. Um, <laughs> I'm going to throw in my bonus. Plenty. <laughs> Uh, I am going to throw up my bonus, truly. Outstanding performance of the week goes to Joey Gallo in the MLB Players, uh, the MLB The Show, excuse me, Players League. Joey Gallo is currently sitting at 8-0 and has hit six homers with, like, I think it was 13 or 15 RBIs by himself, like, him playing as himself and hitting 468. So the guy really knows his hot zones, not <laughs> only electronically, but his own, but his own hot zones. So shout out Coach Duggerton, shout out Joey Gallo. You guys are truly performers of the week, truly outstanding performers of the week. Too cold, too cold. <laughs> Didn't last it long enough. Truly hard seltzer, 5% alcohol, 100 calories. Go get some. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, that's really rude. Uh, we're going to finish this one up with our final thoughts. It is 9.08 Central Standard Time where I'm at. Uh, and last night, I'm not sure who it was, um, somebody verified on Twitter. I feel like it was said me. that Jake. I don't know. I don't even remember. I didn't even look. I don't even... I might have the screenshot somewhere. I think we have a screenshot. I don't know. Talk while I try to look for the screenshot. Talk about whatever... Can I talk about... Talk about Cucumber Lime Gatorade. I think that needs some credit. Um. (laughs) (laughs) Ooh. Cucumber Lime Gatorade is... The the only thing worse is Lemon Pepino or whatever that... The... It's the same thing. Oh, that's, that's the what we're talking same thing. about? Yeah, the, that's, <laughs> that's the worst there is. No, that's the best flavor. It's the Ugh. most refreshing flavor they make. My brother <laughs> would agree with you on that, but that's just, ugh, they're gross. It, it is doesn't a... get any better than some lime cucumber Gatorade on, like, a 85-degree July day on, you know, the seventh hole. You crack one open on the golf course. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, it was Jason Smith uh, from, he said, whoa, from Jay Glazer with us on Fox Sports Radio. I'm breaking big, big news tomorrow night on Fox Football Now. I mean, big, not, I mean, big national news tomorrow. I'm not kidding around. He has since, since then said that that news is going to be coming out. Um, <clears throat> sorry again. That is going to be coming out. On uh, at 10, 11 o'clock Eastern, 10 o'clock Central. Uh, yep, let's see. Bank of America Stadium, three Georgia Tech versus two Florida State. Um, and so for Coach Duggerton. Uh, anyways, big news. So whatever, <laughs> whatever we have as this big news, we're excited for. Can't wait. It'll probably on, be on next week's show. Um, and next week is going to be a huge draft recap or draft pre preview. Yeah, I have no idea what we're getting with this news. Like, what could it possibly be? You said it's not like player related. It's not transactional. That's like, I feel like if it was like the NFL shutting down post draft, that that would have been broken already by someone else in the meantime because he's had a 24 hour build up to this. If you're gonna wait 24 hours to break news. Like, it better live up to the hype, or you're going to get dragged through the mud on Twitter. And you know that that's, like, all these guys care about these days is, like, their Twitter Twitter interactions. I will say Jake Lazer's probably the one. Him and, like, Schefter are probably the two untouchables as far as, like, people can try to drag him, but whatever they say isn't going to matter. Um, but we'll await the big news, and... That's all I got, man. I'm just going to try to down this truly and go play Papa. So thank you, everybody. <laughs> thank you for everybody. Um, retweet, whatever, shares out there. Hopefully, you know, we're just trying to live our lives here. Producer Liam's going to cut this thing up. You guys will see it tomorrow. Uh, we appreciate the support. I don't know. I think, is there any way more I can 
provide happiness or provide <laughs> thanks? I don't think so. Yeah, just tune in next week for our NFL draft coverage. We might have a couple guests on with us. And in the meantime, everyone tweet at Haley Cruz and get her to acknowledge my presence. <laughs> Love it. I truly hope you achieve your goals. <laughs> See you, everybody. See ya.